What's up, friends? We're uh, here at Algonquin Park. It is uh, early May, early, and uh, we're here to do a little bit of trout fishing and a little bit of camping. Uh, it's my dad, Pete's first time here in Algonquin Park, and we're super excited to show him. So follow along. It's uh, blistering hot, but uh, the water is super cold. So it's great juxtaposition. I've got my Echo here, my Skiff Echo. I've got it loaded up with a little sea line bag. We're doing some hammock camping. I've got my Pelican case camera kit, and we've got some food and some barrels. Let's see how she does. Phoebe and Dad are in the Prospector 16. And uh, we got a little bit of extra stuff so we could do some fly fishing. But uh, we're getting a little bit prepped up for a Coulange trip too, so we're pretty much there. Let's see how she goes. I was just checking with uh, Phoebe and Pete to make sure that I have the right trim on the boat. You always want to make sure you pack your boat properly so that you have more weight in the back and lighter stuff in the front. And that way, when you go to pick up speed in your canoe, you won't be drifting left or right. You'll notice if you're packed wrong, if you start accelerating and going very fast, and you notice you're just drifting off to one side and you can't stop it from doing that. That's usually because your uh, pack is not set up. So Pete, tell me about your first time in Algonquin Park. Algonquin Park. I waited, what, 59.65 years to get here? Yeah. It's good. It's worth it. So far, perfect. It's really beautiful and uh, nice sunny weather with a little breeze. So I'd say ideal May camping. Here's Ev. And we got some Timbits. And we're gonna go hike up to the falls and have a little little break. Whee! Big tree. We're uh, setting up our hammocks here and uh, thought I'd give you a little tip for hammock camping. I've seen more people getting involved with hammock camping lately. And so you always want to make sure you check around for deadheads. You don't want to not be coming home because of a deadhead. So always look around for that. And whatever tree you decide to use, you should always make sure that the tree is at least from the tip of your thumb to the tip of your pinky, doing the little surfer dude. and. The tree should always be a bit bigger than that. I'm only 150 pounds or so, so you should really make sure that you're on something bigger. The hammock is now complete. We've set up extra large tarp. It's not going to rain, but uh, it's calling for like two degrees tonight, so there's probably going to be some frost. I want to pitch that up. Um, I've got an underquilt protector going on here, 
This is part of the Hennessy hammock insulator package. So I just used the uh, kind of like a waterproof membrane. Helps uh, block the wind a bit. I've got my Hennessy hammock here. And uh, inside of that, I've got my hammock gear top quilt. Underneath of that, I've got a small little sheepskin and some wool blankets. And this is the view. Yours looks dainty. Sheesh! Mine looks like an industrial warehouse. <laughs> Turn on the lights now. The lights? Yeah. You got lights? Oh yeah, watch this. Sorry. The lights, you got this right. Oh! Woo! Oh, yeah. Sheesh! And that light is any time you want it to be. Oh really? Yeah. You will hang well tonight. It's got my Kindle in it too. Yeah. Try to carry your uh, carry your axe with your pinky or your index finger towards the blade. So if you fall, you're gonna go. Yeah. So we were checking out that uh, large birch tree. It's a little bit too big. Uh, we don't want to create too much uh, destruction around here. So we're going a little bit deeper. Uh, we're gonna try and see if we can find some hardwood. Whatever you're looking for, you generally want to make sure that it's up on an angle and it's not down on the ground. If it's down on the ground, there's a high chance it's been permeated by all the moisture or that it's been covered by snow. So it's not really gonna be any good firewood. What you want to try and find is a tree that's leaning up and it's starting to lose its bark. Uh, something that has thicker branches at the end of it, which means that the dead branches have already broken off in the wind. That usually means the limbs up there are going to be nice and dry and ready for you to go. You should also probably try and make sure you stick with a hardwood. The way you can identify a hardwood is that it won't be as resinous. It won't have pine needles around. And usually it also will be a lot softer of a wood so you can break it easier. Hardwood that is nice and ready for firewood is going to be nice and hard. You could knock on it like a door and it should be able to split very easily. So you can hear this stuff. Nice and good, the blade won't even go into it. This is pretty much propped up so it looks pretty well good to go. Sounds good to go. The stuff on the ground, that might not be as good, uh, but we're gonna lead with this stuff. And you know, about a 12 foot length of wood at you know, four inches, that should probably last you about one meal's worth of firewood. <laughs> Yeah, and I'll start to connect these pieces. Okay, you take this as a load then? Yeah. Oh. That's, that's yeah. very nice. <laughs> mm, right? Yeah. Through the bush. To the left. Oh, yeah. I see. Straight on through, right? Straight ahead? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Wood. That's a whole thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which is hard enough. Yeah. <laughs> 
stove. Woo! That's dinner. Woo! Thanks. That's it back there, man? I think so. <laughs> the spring peepers were spring peeping all night long and I'm uh, slowly dialing in my kit. I've been hammocking for almost like three or four years now and it fluctuates so much. Uh, all the different places you go changes so often so it's a little bit hard to dial in but uh, I feel like I have it pretty down packed now. I always end up just overdressing and then uh, I overheat. But uh, this time it was great. Woke up nice and dry. Nice. Mm. Bennett's first Algonquin fish. Beautiful, eh? Yeah. Oh, oh buddy. Good job. <laughs> yeah. <Yeehaw. laughs> nice fish in there. Together, this you know mm. this like that's enough yeah. potatoes for you two for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. it's certainly enough for me now. But. Yeah. Have you seen Ozzy lately? He's back, man. I didn't see him. Hint of birch. A hint of birch. This is just like I'm ten sure. ten star luxury. <laughs> ten star. Ten star. See this bacon's cooking. Huh? Yeah, that's great. Works way better than I thought. Okay, so that's over easy. Wee There's the breakfast. Cheers, you guys. Hot diggity. Wow. Lots of the uh, different type of pan fish are biting, so uh, they've been biting on this nice spinner, regular ugly stick. Um, we've got ourselves a nice little Cleo.
for the fly rod, I'm using a uh, nine foot five weight, and I've put myself a little woolly bugger on here. This is what this is what I was catching. Uh, this is what I was catching trout on last year. on the ride and keep your hands and feet inside at all times. Myself a brookie. Thank you, thank you, thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Fished the whole day. I did not think I was gonna catch one at all. I was we were just about to head back. 
Phoebe and Dad were just on their way back to camp to go start a fire for lunch. They're gonna be well surprised. It's pretty small, so I mean, uh, we'll see. It'll be good to test it out. We're, we're gonna really honor it and have a good meal tonight. Oh, pretty. Oh yeah, it's lovely. Oh wow, beautiful, eh? Hey? That should do it, eh? Mm -hmm. Spots, eh? <laughs> well, I've just made sure to paddle a nice decent way off away from camp and I'm gonna uh, get Mr. Trout. That's a wild brook trout too, that is not a stocked brook trout. Yeah, so if you pull your grill off now, maybe just to there. And a little bit of a time. Yeah, that's pretty dang good. Yeah. Brookminster fish. Just mind the bone, you got bones maybe there, you know, yeah. you got to go from the top here, ideally. Yeah. Ooh, doggy! Woo! Oh, that's delicious, wow. Tastes like salmon. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Mm, wow. Stretch it at the parakeet. My experience here in Algonquin, five out of five. Best camping ever. Secluded, bush, water, moving, five out of five. What a comfortable setup, eh? Oh, yeah, this is great. Perfect. Triple layer, functional, outer layer, stop the wind, inner layer holds the heat, that holds me, this covers me, minus 20, good to go. <laughs> Sweet. 
So we were talking about a trick on how to get your hammock hung up properly. Uh, this time I didn't really have the greatest hang, but uh, you always want to make sure your ridge line is pretty nice and loose uh, because it'll allow you to decompress in your hammock. You'll have a lot more slack in your hammock, so it'll allow you to stretch out. If your hammock is too tight, you're going to be all condensed and it can be quite uncomfortable. This is too tight. So a trick uh, you can use when you approach a tree and you're not really exactly sure what to do is start to measure in your arm length. For example, my tarp, I know, is one, two, three of my arm lengths. So if I find a set of trees, I normally want to find something that's about 3.5. When you set your stuff up, a good rule of thumb for your tarp is to keep it up. This is a little bit too low. It should be about up here. So that way when you're under your tarp, it's above your head. For your hammock stuff, you normally want to have a 30 degree angle for your line. In this case, it's a bit too tight because the trees are a little further apart than I would like. Normally, you want to try and have your feet a bit higher than your head so that you're kind of balanced a bit more when you're finally in there. But you'll find what works best for you. Just make sure you don't keep your ridge line too tight or else you're not going to be very comfortable and you might be compromising the material of your hammock. Now, don't really listen to me. If you really want to get some good hammock advice, go and find Shug Emery on YouTube. S-H-U-G-E-M-E-R-Y and he'll show you all the hammock gear tips that you need and uh, you know if there's any kind of hammock gear that comes out early early he'll be the first to show you so we're uh, we're just about to pack up it's gonna be like a four and a half hour drive back home and like an hour of paddle we're hoping to be home uh, around dinner time. This was such a great experience. I had such a good sleep.